Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for the Festival of Cinema NYC Virtual Filmmaker Interviews. I am Stephen S. Miller, cabaret star, and I'm being joined by my fabulous co-host, Bonnie Rose, star of film and television. Today, we are being joined by Grace Phillips with her film, Doris 85, which will be happening on Thursday, October 1st at 7 p.m. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. It's very good to be here. Thanks for having me. We're very happy to have you today and to be interviewed for the Festival of Cinema. Um, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your film, Doris 85? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's a short film about um, an older couple in their 80s um, having dinner at home and uh, one of them is unfortunately living with Alzheimer's disease, and it's just kind of a look at um, a day in their life together. What was the inspiration to do this film and to do it now? Yeah, so I have had two members of my family um, affected by Alzheimer's. At first, it was my great-grandmother on my father's side, who I knew from when I was very young, watched her kind of live through it for a long time and pass away, do complications from it. And then um, when I was making, when I was like, oh, I want to make a film, um, my grandfather, my mother's father, um, had been living with it for a few years and it had gotten quite bad. My grandpa Jim and my grandma Paula, who was taking care of him. And I just, I had gone to see them and he had told me this story like over and over and over and over and over again. Um, we were only there for a couple hours, he told us so many times, and it was this weird thing where, like, I literally couldn't remember the story anymore. He said it to me so many times, and I could not remember it, so I asked my mom what it was, and she told me, and I was like, okay, you know, I'm interested in this idea of my grandparents when nobody else is there, because they lived in um, Ohio, and we lived in New York, so I didn't see them that much. I'm like, okay, so what, what goes on when, like, we're not here, and you two are just alone, so that's where it came from. Well, it was very authentic and very real and very precise. How long did that take you to shoot? Uh, thank you. Um, we, we prepped for months and months and months, and then we shot it over the course of like two and a half days in Brooklyn. And um, how did that come about? How did you come about getting, let's say, the funding and um, all the people that work with you to do this? Mm -hmm. um, so I have like a life partner and collaborator. His name is Andreas Rolsvig. He's also my cinematographer. And we had made a short before. We wanted to make another one. Um, so we came upon this story. And then I met um, our two producers, Kevin Bay and Maria Kay, and, you know, pitched in the movie and they were really excited about it. Um, so the four of us got together and made a Seed and Spark campaign, and we were able to raise like $7,000 to, um, like through that to fund the film. And from there, you know, the rest of the crew was, you know, we all have been working in the industry and knew people and, you know, got people on board. And what is your, um, where, where do you see this film going, especially in this particular time that we're living in? with mm. so many um, baby boomers <laughs> uh, having this as a reality. And because you had it placed not in an assisted living home, not in a nursing home, but very specifically in their home. Yeah. Um, I, haven't, I haven't thought about where I want it to go after the festival circuit, um, but I would love for as many people as possible to see it. Um, especially people who I think can find something specific and relevant about it. I, I am very saddened by this thing that happens now where when people get quite bad in this disease and other um, medical issues in their older age that they are kind of forced into having their end of life be at a hospital or somewhere unfamiliar. Um, so I'm not, that's a really good question. I want to think about that where it can live after festivals so that maybe it can help people kind of like figure out how not 
to allow that to happen to their loved ones. Mm -hmm. And how excited are you to see this up on the big screen at a drive-in in Queens? I love drive-ins so much. I'm so excited by this. I think it is so cool and so great that you guys were able to like make that happen. So I'm truly like elated. I'm like, it's gonna be huge. <laughs> so thank you for doing that. That's really impressive and I'm very, very excited. Well, we're very happy that you had the time today to interview with the Festival of Cinema. Thank you so much. And now back to you, Stephen. Yes, thank you so much, Grace. Uh, like my fabulous co-host said, this film is very important and very moving and very realistic and real when you're watching it. And I'm so thankful for you for making this. And we wanna thank you for being here today to speak with us. Thank you. It's always so amazing to hear that people love your work. I'm always like, really? Wow. <laughs> so thank you. And thank you also to my fabulous co-host for joining us today. And until next time, we look forward to seeing you again. See you at the drive-in. Drive